Howdy, I'm John Richmond, and I'm the inventor of the Sluice Scoose Industries Gold Drop Gold Separating Processor. The Gold Drop operates on the principle of elutriation, a vertical water flow that separates the gold, the more dense gold, from the less dense ore, either being alluvial or hard rock crush. Water flowing through the gold drop is provided by this 12 volt, 36 watt, 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump. This bilge pump is powered by that 12 volt battery, which is subsequently being charged by this 100 watt solar panel. So 36 watts of consumption 100 watts of energy being supplied by the Sun keeps this battery fully charged at all times through Gold Drop operation. The Gold Drop is operated as follows. Or, whether it be alluvial or hard rock, is dumped into this funnel with a scoop. This water flow gently washes the ore down through the funnel through this feed tube and the ore dumps out into this trap. This is a mixing valve here that keeps the ore agitated above the point of elutriation. This is what I refer to as the drop tube. This valve here controls the flow of water traveling up supporting the ore in the trap, then settles the gold down through and drops through the drop tube and into the waiting collection jar. This water flowing vertically is controlled by this water meter here. I can set this from 0.2 gallons up to a gallon a minute. And this controls how fast the gold drops through and into the jar. So as ore is being added to the trap, the incoming ore then displaces the ore in the trap vertically up and out of the gold drop and empties down this magnet sluice. This sluice contains a magnetic mat with the two dams to hold back the magnetite that I add to capture the excesses flowing out of the gold drop. Then the tailings flow into this bucket here and are trapped. The water then returns to the pump bucket with this siphon hose here as the water fills up in the tailings barrel the water level then forces the water over by means of gravity back to the pump barrel and the water is completely recirculated through the system. The next step is to charge the magnet sluice with magnetite, giving it a layer that will not move as it is stuck down to the magnet mat. So as water and tailings are being discharged from the gold drop, the magnetite acts like quicksand to the slow moving dense particles being discharged by the gold drop, capturing and holding them until they are removed. The first step will add some of this alluvial ore into the funnel which will wash down into the trap by the water flow in the funnel 
and will set the water of lutriation. So right now, this water flow is preset at about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 gallons per minute. So now what we shall do is reduce the water flow to allow some of the mineral to drop into the jar or into the trap or out of the trap and into the drop tube. There we go. We have some of the ore now dancing in the drop tube and that's about where we'll set it. Maybe a little bit more up. And then now we'll increase the mixing water flow to get the material moving in the trap. So now we're set. Now about 0.25 gallons per minute on the meter. And that's where we'll operate the gold drop and allow the gold to drop out. The meter is set, uh, the mixing valve is set about halfway open. That allows the ore in the trap to move around, allowing the gold to make its way to the aperture of the drop. So now we'll go ahead and introduce our painter to extract her gold. Now I will wash out the bucket of the little bit of ore remaining in the bucket. Clean out the bucket, make sure I get it all. Wash out the funnel. And we are done processing. This is the action of the tailings, the ore, inside the trap column. Floating their way around 
up and down and all around, dumping the gold out through the elutriation and into the jar. You can see the tailings escaping into the magnet sluice and then very slowly making their way down the sluice. and into the tailings bucket. Now we can close the valve. First off, we'll increase the water flow into the trap to keep all the material up in the trap. Nothing will fall through on the gate valve. Then we can close the valve and unscrew the jar to reveal what gold dropped into the jar. So there we have what dropped into the jar. So we have some mineral in there too, but that's some pretty small gold. And that's what we collected. Now the mineral that drops in the jar, those are pickers, very easy to separate from the smaller gold. But there you have an idea of how small gold can fall into the trap. And all of the rest of the flower gold that did escape is now stuck in the magnetite, in the magnet sluice. So we'll reveal what gold we've got out of that. Now we'll remove the dams. First we'll stick the pan under the end of the sluice. Remove the dams. And then scrape off the material in the dam into the pan. I think I'll need two pans for this operation. Scrape the sluice clean. And now we'll find out what's in this material. I will now use the spin it off in order to remove the magnetite that I placed inside the sluice. Let me show you the action of the spin it off. Spin it off, picks up the magnetite, and rotates it end over end. That way, it cannot grab onto the goal. So, all that is removed from the pan is just the magnetite, leaving behind the mineral and the gold. Now that I've removed all of the magnetite with the spin it off, 
This is what's left of the mineral that was caught in the magnetite. So now I'll just go ahead and break this down and uh, reveal what gold is trapped inside this material. So you want to fluidize it really good. Get that gold to go to the bottom. And then just very slowly pour off the overburden over the back side of the gold claw pan and any of the bigger or the heavier materials are going to get caught in these big riffles. So you just keep pouring off the overburden until you go vertical with the pan. Keep it submerged in the water. Keep shaking it and fluidizing it. Keep that gold down to the bottom. kind of keep pouring it off. Now we've gotten vertical with the pan. Now you just kind of gently wash off the big riffles back into the front of the pan. Now that you got all the material there, now this front of the pan has little tiny riffles and bigger riffles. So now you just keep fluidizing it and pour off the overburden off the front. Kind of keep your eyes on the front of the pan. Make sure you're not pouring any gold out the end. Kind of keep it flat and that way the agitation just kind of keeps the gold to the back side. Every once in a while, wash it all back down to the in the pan. And then start back over the front again. Just pour it off. And there we have the tiny gold that escaped the gold drop but captured by the magnet sluice. Not really very much, but there is very small gold there. Oh, some even some floaters. So that's how efficient. Let's see if we can get more of that to float. Now you can see. It caught those floaters too. And that's the efficiency of the gold drop. The gold can't escape because it's all mixed in, submerged. There is no water surface to wash gold away as in a conventional sluice. So that's the gold drop. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being interested.